Welcome to the EP Wealth Advisors Informed Investor Market Update. My name is Breen Murphy, the Director of Client Experience here at EP Wealth Advisors. And this week, for the week of February 1st, I'm joined by Adam Phillips, our Director of Portfolio Strategy. He's a Chartered Financial Analyst and a Certified Financial Planner. You may have seen his commentary in the Wall Street Journal, Barron's, Market Watch, CNN, um, or on such video interviews as uh, the TD Ameritrade uh, Network, uh, as well as Cheddar. Um, Adam, thank you so much for uh, joining us here. Sure. Hi, Brian. How you doing? I'm doing good. So, so this week we're going to do just like a special episode um, because we're going to address what everyone's talking about, which is uh, the the whole GameStop saga. So, what is happening? Oh, uh, okay. How much time do we have? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I guess the, the, the best place to start, Breen, is, is by talking about short selling a, a mm -hmm. little bit. I, I think for, for, for most, most of our clients, most investors that are probably watching this, they're familiar with the most traditional form of investing. And that's mm -hmm. the investing that we're generally engaged in here mm -hmm. for our clients. That is what we refer to as long-only investing. Mm -hmm. Really what that means is you buy something with the expectation and the hope that it's going to go up in price. Mm -hmm. Short sellers take the opposite view. They actually are betting against a, a certain outcome or, or a, a certain stock. So what they will do is, is they'll buy something with the expectation uh, or hope that it will uh, lose money, right? Okay. So um, it, it, is, it is that inverse play. And so the, the way that they do this uh, – mm -hmm at a very simple level is uh, it's they, they borrow shares of say um, uh, just a, a company ABC uh, or, mm. or GameStop in this case, right? Mm. Uh, they borrow shares and, and then they sell them. And so say this, they, they did it for $10. They, they are now short that company. Mm. And what they do is, is they're hoping that when they go to close out that position, the company will be lower than $10 a share so that they can buy those shares at say $5 a share and make a $5 profit because they sold them in advance of mm -hmm. buying them themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So the so I, I guess a, a couple things, when, when we're long only investors, there, there's, a, there's a maximum amount of what we can lose. We know that going in, that the, low, the most that we can lose is, is really everything if the company's price goes to zero. Mm -hmm. With those who short stocks, their losses are potentially unlimited. Right. Mm -hmm. the, in, in theory, the price of a stock can go to infinity. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what we saw um, a little bit of last week. We saw a, a number of these companies skyrocket, those these most shorted companies. You know, GameStop is the one that's getting a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, somehow it shares uh, about 150 percent of, of the free float. So those uh, the shares that are were available, 150 percent uh, were actually. Uh, How does short um, interest get that high? So the, the way that it really gets high is there's a lot of uh, the, the other the other group that was in the news quite a bit last week were, were the hedge funds were these big mm -hmm. players and, and really mm -hmm. anyone can bet against and and and, and short a stock mm -hmm. but it's really done to a, a larger magnitude when you have these huge institutional players and it's these hedge funds that actually that they're not necessarily like like us and, and follow a long only strategy they have uh, short strategies as well where they're mm -hmm. trying to identify those losers uh, in a market and, and trying to bet on those companies who are uh, not going to have pretty outcomes and, and profit from that. And mm -hmm. so what they do is they really load up and, and short a lot of these shares. And this is all public information. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, you can go on, I can go on my Bloomberg terminal, but really anyone can go online to their preferred financial website and see how much of a company is traded short. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, this was, uh, you know, a good one in the past was Tesla. Uh, mm -hmm. But before it, see, it, it saw its huge rise, there was, I remember, you know, several years ago, a, a third of the company was being traded short. And so what you saw was if, if all of a sudden uh, Tesla came out with a good headline, they had a good earnings report, uh, or, you know, they, they still weren't profitable at the time, but they were showing progress, then you would see the shares go up. All these Tesla short sellers would start losing money and they'd say, I got to close out this position because this thing could keep going. And what that yeah. does is that forced buying to close out those short positions just sends the stock up even higher. Right. So what you saw over the last week was really that, but times a hundred, right? Yeah. GameStop was, was up, uh, I think 400% 400 
on the week, it was up over, uh, it closed out January up over 1600%. Wow. Um, so I, I think the question is, you know, how long can this go? Uh, you know, has, has that much really changed with GameStop? And, and I think that's what we need to ask ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, GameStop is a company where it, it's, its company and, and it, its outlook hasn't changed. Nothing really changed uh, with respect to the business over mm-hmm. this time period. And so I think that's really important when we're talking about investing in a company and, and it's from, from, a fundamental, uh, from a fundamental perspective, trying to determine if there's a catalyst for growth in the future, trying to explain some of the price movement we've seen. It's really hard to justify, uh, um, just uh, over a month ago, the, the market cap of GameStop was, was less than a billion dollars. So it was worth mm-hmm. less than a billion dollars. Fast forward, at the close of business on Friday, it was worth over $20 billion. And it was mm-hmm. uh, greater than uh, a little more than 200 of the companies uh, in the S&P 500. So things got a little bit ahead of themselves. That's not to say that they're going to automatically, this thing's going to automatically crash. But historically, these things haven't turned out well. You know, actually, yeah. today, GameStop is down 25%. But that doesn't mean that we've seen the last of it. It's hard to know just yeah. how much longer this, this has to go. Right. So I also want to hear you talk about the way in which this is, this was driven up, right? Because as I understand it, you know, shorting is like a classic part of many hedge fund strategies, right? You know, and so this is not uncommon, right? But to see a meteoric to see a meteoric rise of a stock that a hedge fund owns is fairly rare, right? But it's also the cause. So you know, you have these Reddit readers right uh on you know you know it's a it's a reddit channel um and they're all you know sharing like stock information um and they're like they're starting to buy right so this seems like something that was unanticipated from the hedge funds perspective as well it 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 caught everyone off guard and and uh it's uh, it was entertaining to watch play out i i don't think that uh, many of the hedge funds that really Lost quite a bit last week. Um, r- really thought it was too entertaining themselves, mm-hmm. but uh, it's, it was kind of fascinating just because we've never really seen something like this. We've seen um, we, we've seen um, these uh, these massive what we refer to as a short squeeze when these short yeah. sellers really get 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 pressed and they need to close out those positions because all of a sudden they're getting squeezed. They need to cut their losses. Right. Mm-hmm. This was an epic epic short squeeze. We've seen a lot of them in the past. Nothing to this scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and really. What, what caused this, and, and you kind of touched on it, this, this Reddit, we, this, um, you know, it, it was this group that formed online that really mobilized online. And, and we've seen how, how groups can mobilize very quickly and effectively over the last year, right? In a number of dis- different in- uh, instances, mm-hmm. we just saw this play out in the financial markets, which was a, a little bit of a different playing field. Right. Um, but but I, I think it's, it, it's a few things. I, uh, number one, I, I think it's a, it's a fact factor of individuals really having a lot more time on their hands these days potentially mm-hmm. they're all at home they're uh they're they're, they're reading the news they, they can this is their way of socializing is to be on these chat forms um mm-hmm. there's a lot of, of money on the sidelines something that mm-hmm. we've talked about as a potential catalyst for stocks down the road well we saw uh, part of that play out in a different way over the last week mm-hmm. right um, where a lot of this money uh, these this group of investors decided to chase a handful of names, right? Mm-hmm. And and with the idea of we're going to try to take on that the big man, the little man's going to try to take on Goliath, uh, mm-hmm. is one way of looking at it. And Goliath being the hedge funds, right. try to force them to close out these positions because as they go to close it out, it'll just provide that much more uh, upward uh, upward pressure to the stock price. And and that's really what yeah. last week was about. Okay. So I got a couple questions before I want to get into like the implications of this in the economy. There's one other side story that is really interesting, which is a lot of these retail investors have been using Robinhood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they close down um, trading at the end of the week on GameStop and, and uh, or, or uh, purchasing those shares uh, at the end of the week. Right. And so I just wanted to understand like, because one of the things I ended up reading was about like cost of capital and how they have to have enough money to cover the trades. And I just would love to hear your perspective on that um, as it relates to, you know, kind of the saga that is uh, this GameStop uh, episode. You know, this really gets to market infrastructure, Breen. Um, you know, the, the, the way that the markets work 
in general is, is uh, equities used to be traded T plus three, meaning you, you bought or sold something and you would actually receive delivery of those shares or, or the, the person selling would receive those, uh, the, the proceeds from the sale mm -hmm. uh, at three days after the trade. It, it's now gone to T plus two, so it's a two-day settlement time. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a period of time between when that trade is executed and, and when it's actually closed mm -hmm. and, and when it settles. And so what happens uh, across uh, all, all these brokers is mm -hmm. they need to provide some kind of margin. And, and that margin is, it, it is effectively based on, um, on, on uh, it allows them to, to, uh, to I guess provide good faith for when that for when that deal closes and make sure they mm -hmm. have enough on hand to, to execute on their client's behalf or whoever. It's kind of like an escrow account. It seems like it, 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 I guess that's a good way to think about it. You know, and what happened last week is we saw the margin requirements jump quite a bit, and the reason is because the price of GameStop and some of these companies was so volatile mm -hmm. that there was a risk that someone would would buy it at three hundred dollars a share. And uh, it's kind of that greater fool's theory, thinking it, it had to go to 500 in, in a couple of days, right at that pace. Um, but if it went the other way, then they would try to say back out of it, mm. um, and they wouldn't make good delivery. And so what they what they ended up doing was imposing higher uh, uh, margin requirements for for DTC uh, for DTC. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's really just uh, to to make sure everything gets executed appropriately. Now at the various uh, at the underlying brokers. Mm -hmm. such as uh, Robinhood, um, TD Ameritrade, a, a lot of them uh, suspended trading or limited trading on these firms to try to mm -hmm. uh, manage that, uh, that, that volume a little bit better. Uh, the, other, the other thing that they did is that they imposed higher uh, margin requirements. So, um, so, so it, it tried to really just control the flow, I, I think is what you saw. Now, mm -hmm. I think some viewed it as, as uh, Robinhood maybe teaming up with uh, with uh, Wall Street and, mm -hmm. and going against the little man, you know, so there was a lot of that at play. Um, but I think it was more about uh, just trying to get a handle on the situation um, since it was actually costing them quite a lot of money with the volatility. Okay. Okay. So that's a really interesting thing because, like, I, I started to see some of that and I just wanted to better understand it from your perspective. Um, and, and now I really want to understand, like, so there's, there's 50 other names that were out there on this, you know, uh, you know, like restrictions of, of purchasing. Right. So, you know, how much can this have an effect on like our financial institutions and the market at large? So one of the questions I, I got last week was, is the market broken? <laughs> uh, and it's a, yeah. it's a fair question. Um, you know, I, I, I received that one. I received is is this just you know more evidence of of this of uh, of a bubble right in in this current yeah. market and and I think those are two separate but they're similar questions. Um, the market is not broken. I, I think if you take a step back and you look at the way things went last week, I, I think the market's actually um, it, it's it's uh, working just as as we ex would expect it to. More mm -hmm. buyers means the stock goes up. More sellers means the stock goes down, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's all about supply and demand. Um, so it's working in that regard. I, I think what, what might not be working is, is the infrastructure around short selling. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and, and, and you know, there might be something to, to, you know, to, to look at there. Um, and uh, you know, sh should there be rules in place or, or, or higher margin requirements to try to uh, get people to be able to short the stock less, right? Or, or cost them a little bit more to short and maybe disincentivize that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could be something that we look at. But from the broad market standpoint, I think it's really important to look at the fact that the stock market beyond outside of those, those handful of names, what was actually doing its, its, its own thing. It, it's, it's doing fine. The short interest on the stock market is actually close to the lowest in history. It's about one and a half percent is mm -hmm. currently traded short. So that's extremely low. You didn't see short squeezes in, in you know, most of the names in, in the S&P 500 because those are you know, pretty solid names uh, that, uh, that there's a, you know, obviously there, there's pockets of weakness, but generally speaking, there, there's some optimism there that these, mm -hmm. uh, these have long-term staying power. These companies will be around for a while. And so mm -hmm. you don't see the same level of short interest there. And so you didn't see a, a corresponding short squeeze. Um, so I think it's, you know, the, the market's okay. I, I, to the bubble question, you know, 
there, there are pockets of the of the market that do give us pause. Um, I, I think uh, you, you have to acknowledge the fact that there are things like this um, that uh, you know think kind of like what I said. The, these things don't usually end well. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily be be buying some of these names here, right? Just because mm -hmm. fundamentals uh, you know, have, haven't uh, haven't really changed on these, mm -hmm. and, and so the outlook hasn't either. But we also have things like Bitcoin, which we've talked about in the past, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day. What we're doing is we're focusing on fundamentals. We're focusing on the mac macro outlook. Those things haven't changed, right? The, mm -hmm. the, 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 the broader outlook for the economy and the markets is still favorable. We're still being supported by monetary policy, by an accommodative Fed who just met last week and really just confirmed their, their, their dovish stance. Uh, dovish mean they're just going to sit around, do whatever it takes. Inflation is something they're going for, but they're not going to, if they see signs that inflation is picking up, it's not going to be reason alone to take away the punch bowl, right? Mm -hmm. They're doing everything needed to help get us uh, on the right track as, as an economy. Uh, and, and, and obviously we, we have news with the vaccines, those are continuing to be deployed. And, and, and so the outlook is favorable. That is what I think we as investors should be focusing on uh, within mm -hmm. our diversified portfolios. Okay. So, so one last question. So, you know, I inside of our stock portfolio, um, we like, you know, we have like the individual stock portfolio, we, you know, we have, uh, different funds that we uh, like put in people's allocations. How much exposure do, you know, the EP wealth advisor clients have to, you know, those 50 names or some of the names that, that, that were being talked about? Uh, it is extremely small if we have any. Yeah. Um, so you know, within the individual stock portfolio, we don't have any. Yeah. Um, the reason I said if we have any is in, in things like mutual funds. You know, mutual funds are themselves diversified baskets of securities. And if we own, uh, say, a small cap, uh, meaning it's investing in a basket, a large basket of smaller companies, then, then you know, a couple of weeks ago, a company like GameStop was considered a smaller company, even though mm -hmm. it's, it's right. risen 1,600%, right? So it could be in those, but it's generally a... a very, very, very small portion of that basket. And so, yeah. um, you know, we, uh, the, the, the mutual funds that we're using, they are looking for companies with, uh, you know, with a favorable long-term outlook as well. And so if, if they felt that GameStop, um, uh, you know, uh, fit those conditions and, and, uh, and, and fit their criteria for, for a good stock, then they owned it, but it wasn't because of, uh, they expected a short squeeze and wanted to participate in that. Yeah. So it sounds like we're philosophically different from participating in this, both on the short, short seller side and on um, just like the asset selection, even if we were to be on the other side, like, you know, we're, we're being a, a little bit less speculative or a lot less speculative and more fundamentally sound. So, right. um, okay. So um, I think that's, that's a great place for us, you know, as we get into um, you know, the markets, the, you know, the, the broader picture, uh, more details. Um, I know that you're going to be presenting um, the Informed Investor Market Outlook webinar, that longer, you know, one hour full presentation with slides, um, you know, looking at all sorts of, uh, you know, spots in the economy and that broader picture. So for those people uh, this week, if you want to get more into that, feel free to tune in um, and you can like, you, you can find a link and sign up there. Um, and Adam, I really appreciate your time today because I know I needed to learn a little bit more about like the, the, the market infrastructure, as you so put it, um, behind all of this. So uh, I really appreciate your time. Great. Oh, happy to do it. Thanks, Brian. All right. And uh, for everyone else out there, uh, I hope this was uh, helpful and you know, for you all as well. Um, if you like it, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you can comment or subscribe to our blog. Um, and uh, look out for that, uh, that Informed Investor Market Outlook webinar as well. Um, we'll be happy to answer more questions for you there. So Adam, thanks so much. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. 